Good afternoon. The Maryland Skipjack is a traditional Chesapeake Bay fishing boat used primarily for oyster dredging. These small sailing vessels are renowned for their seaworthiness, quality construction, as well as their straightforward and no-nonsense design. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about the Martha Lewis, a skipjack permanently berthed at Haverty Grace. But first, let's learn a little bit more about the Martha Lewis and skipjacking. We are Chesapeake Heritage Conservancy, the owners and protectors of Skipjack Martha Lewis. Since 1994, Martha has welcomed guests of all ages, school kids, families, organizations, and adventurers. But for the past seven years, Martha has been out of commission. Many have not seen her and have wondered what has become of her. But she has not been forgotten. A hearty crew of volunteers has been working hard to restore her and put her back in operation. This is the story of her restoration and her return to glory. Her return to the sailing life on Chesapeake Bay. Martha was born in 1955 next to her two sisters, the Lady Katie and the Rosie Parks. They were built in the boatyard of Bronza Parks of Wingate, Maryland. The three sisters were the last skipjacks ever built for commercial oyster dredging on Chesapeake Bay. Humans have been harvesting shellfish for thousands of years. They would dive, wade in the shallows, and use crude dugout canoes to harvest mussels, clams, quahogs, and oysters. Over the past few centuries, many types of watercraft were built to make the job easier. Five and seven log canoes, bateaus, bug eyes, schooners, pungies, and various other designs quickly evolved but the most economic, the most efficient, and the most glorious form was the sloop-rigged skipjack introduced in the mid-1800s. The oyster fleet expanded to over 2,000 vessels by the early 20th century at the peak of the oystering era in Chesapeake Bay. By the late 1800s, it became clear that new super-efficient powered dredging vessels were rapidly depleting the oyster stock in the bay and laws to protect the species were quickly passed. The skipjack emerged as the most suitable design for regulating the catch. The new laws only allowed the dredging of oysters under the power of sail, making the single-masted, low freeboard, shallow draft skipjack the most viable vessel for dredging under sail. Power dredging by large vessels was no longer permitted. In spite of the new regulations, oyster populations continued to decline, and by the early 1900s, dredging for oysters under sail became difficult and unproductive. In response to pressure from the watermen, regulations were changed to allow power dredging two days per week. Skipjack captains could dredge every day, but only two days under power. Engines on board the skipjacks were not permitted except to run the winders used to pull in the dredges. In the early years, the regulators dictated which days boats could be pushed by their engines. But again, under pressure from the skipjack captains, the rules were changed. Captains were now permitted to select their two power dredging days, allowing them to adapt to ever-changing weather conditions and sea states. Those rules apply to this very day which is why you see that little boat hanging in the davits off the backside of skipjacks like the Martha Lewis. Any captain with his yaw boat in the water on sail days had better be prepared for a visit from the Oyster Police, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. The Martha Lewis worked the oyster reefs of the Middle Chesapeake from the late 1950s to the mid-1980s. By then, productivity had plummeted due to overfishing and disease, and Martha's life as a working skipjack 
slowly came to an end and began her rapid decline. In 1993, Dr. Randolph George bought her and restored her to life, not just as a museum piece, but as a working oyster dredger. She was fully restored in 1994 and returned to service both as a workboat and a historic vessel. Martha has since served the community as a tourist attraction, ambassador, and educational platform. But 27 years later, she is once again due for a remake. Martha is now in the final stages of another complete restoration at Ruark Boat Works in Cambridge, Maryland, and is scheduled to return to service in Haverty Grace in 2022. She is owned by Chesapeake Heritage Conservancy. This series will document her most recent restoration, which began in 2014. She is scheduled to return to glory in 2022. Welcome to <clears throat> the Historical Society's ongoing program brown, of brown bag lunches, where today we're going to talk about the restoration of the Martha Lewis. Our guest is Carl H. Fockler, president of the Chesapeake Heritage Conservancy. The Chesapeake Heritage Conservancy is, a, is the steward of the skipjack Martha Lewis <clears throat> and is responsible for the boat's restoration project. Carl is a lifelong resident of Cecil County, having graduated from the University of Virginia which, with a bachelor's degree in history and government, and subsequently receiving his Juris Doctorate from the Widener University School of Law. Carl is a former deputy state's attorney for Cecil County and currently has a general law practice and real estate brokerage firm in Elkton. Having overseen the restoration process of the Martha Lewis, he quite has quite a story to tell. Before we get into the story, Carl, first, can you answer my question? How did Skipjacks get their name? Good afternoon, Jackie, and, and thank you very much for inviting me to uh, here this afternoon to talk about Martha Lewis. Uh, the Skipjack, uh, you know, there, there are many, few different stories, but I think the one that resonates the most with, with the, uh, how the Skipjack got its name is because of the... Um, it's a very strong sailing vessel, and when it's doing licks and, and actually dredging, it kind of skips and pulls across the water and almost like jumps out of the water. So uh, from what I've understood, it's, it's primarily named after like the skipjack tuna or a strong, strong fish that are, are predatory in nature and, uh, and captured. So that's the best, uh, the best answer I have for you as to the naming of the skipjack. Well, thank you so much. Um, now, tell us a little bit more about the restoration of the Martha Lewis. Well, uh, the restoration, as many people know, have been, has been going on for, for some time now. Uh, initially, uh, Martha has been a living classroom for the people of Hartford and Cecil Counties and state of Maryland for since 1995, uh, when she was originally restored by by Alan Rawls and Randy George and a whole host of volunteers who participated. Uh, at the Concord Point Lighthouse. And since that time, she's been operating, again, as a living classroom, taking kids out, teaching them about the ecology of the bay, the environment, and also the history of the various areas where she would go because half of the class would go uh, on the boat and then the other half would, would stay in. And then at lunchtime, they'd switch up and so everybody got the turn. Uh, but unfortunately in the, you know, it's a wooden, it's a wooden boat. And we all know that wooden boats uh, require a tremendous amount of maintenance. And there came a time in the, let's say, late, later uh, to, uh, 2010s, early 2010s, when the mass went bad. And after the, the mass went bad, uh, she was um, apparently there wasn't sufficient funding at that point in time for restoration process. And then as they went and looked further at the boat, they determined that there were a lot of other issues. Uh, and, and work needed to be performed. Uh, I got involved probably in um, the uh, later teens, uh, 2017, 18. And since that time, it's, it's been a real feat to first and foremost to acquire funding. And um, 
And then, of course, to, to really get, you know, because the folks that work on skipjacks are, are called shipwrights and to find quality shipwrights and people that can, and you know, are up to the task. So there came a time in, in about 2019, I believe, late or early 2019, uh, we decided to take the boat from Havity Grace and take it down to Richardson's Maritime Museum and Works Boat Works. Uh, it's a nonprofit down in Cambridge, Maryland. Uh, they have a tremendous, you know, very small, you know, they're a smaller uh, nonprofit as, as are we, and, and you being a nonprofit as well, you, you understand. So, but it's been real nice. It's been a great partnership. So, so there we have uh, the likes of um, shipwrights. Uh, John Swain is our, is our chief shipwright, our master shipwright. And John's a, a fantastic individual who's, who's been uh, built the Sultana, uh, which is a similar program as we have here where it's in the living classroom down in Chest, um, down in Chestertown, Maryland on the Eastern shore. So we have also uh, uh, Jim Brighton who's worked on the, uh, the Dove uh, and some of these folks have also worked on the Calamar Nickel as well. So uh, this has been a big project for, uh, for the restoration of Martha. And I have, um, I have prepared a, uh, uh, a slide, a, a brief slideshow presentation uh, if you'd like me to share that uh, with some of the restoration work which has occurred on Martha. That would be very good. interesting. Very good. I will uh, go ahead and bring that up, if you'll give me a moment here. So this is Martha under full sail, of course, when she's um, you know, in, in a proper uh, sailing condition. Uh, this is uh, the boat works where we're currently restoring her. And if anybody ever goes down to Cambridge, they go down and uh, make the, uh, really the first uh, right at the stoplight once you cross the bridge on Route 50 and you go down to uh, just before the drawbridge and you'll see Martha uh, sitting in the field on the right-hand side, right next to uh, Richardson's uh, uh, Maritime Museum and Works Boat Works. So initially when we, when we started with Martha, there were many, many things that needed to be done. Uh, we had an issue. We thought we were going to have to replace the keel, uh, but after much, um, which is the spine of the boat, essentially, but after a lot of uh, consideration and we decided that the keel was, was in good shape and so forth, and that wasn't going to be necessary, but we did determine that other things needed to be done. For example, we had to, uh, we had to restore the, um, the centerboard encasement. Uh, and we had to remove the, uh, the deck houses. The Martha Lewis has an aft deck house and a forward deck house. This is looking forward toward the forward deck house. So they were removed. Uh, and, and in the process of doing it, in order to work on some of these matters, we had to remove a large portion of the, uh, of the deck midship. And you can see the, um, in these pictures. This is a picture of the forward deck house, which is uh, being restored. And you can see the work that's going on up in the upper right-hand corner, of course, is, is it close to being a finished product with fresh paint and so forth. Uh, that's currently not back on the boat just yet, but it's, it's ready to go on. And we hope to start putting the deck house or the four deck house uh, uh, here in, in early spring. But one of the big things we had to do was replace the centerboard encasement. And the skipjacks are a very shallow draft uh, boat, which they have a kind of a, a flat uh, bottom to them, which allows them to go, you know, into shallower waters. As, and as oyster population started to dwindle, uh, that's one of the reasons why the skipjacks were, uh, were created as they were, so they could go further into shallow areas as opposed to the older boats like the bug eyes. But they have what's called a, a, a swing swing keel or centerboard. So it within housed within this particular uh, construction is a, is a centerboard, which will drop down and give the, uh, uh, give the, um, the, the skipjack added depth and more stability when it's under sail. So this was a big project. Um, this is pictures of the, uh, of what we call the caulking or the corking of the, uh, of the centerboard and Basement. So after it was prepared, we of course have to go back and put what we do is we put cotton um, into the seams and then the cotton is uh, subsequently painted and then it's sealed with a, uh, um, uh, a, 
a sealant, uh, it's kind of a silicone type sealant. But you can see the old tools that are up in the upper right hand corner, which are very similar to the tools which have been used, uh, you know, all along for the uh, restoration and building of these, these types of boats. So that's, this is a picture of the, um, more of the center uh, midship decks, which had to be torn out uh, again to repair and also to, to replace the centerboard encasement. In the aft part there, we're looking for the stern of the boat and that is the, uh, the aft uh, cabin. And all of that was rebuilt as well because we had to, in the aft cabin area, uh, we decided it was easiest to take off the, um, the aft cabins because we had uh, strong backs to rebuild and strong backs run from from basically uh, the starboard side to the port side and they're they're pretty significant and substantial pieces of of lumber which have to go in and in order to get them in uh, what well, we couldn't get them in without uh, having the aft cabin removed which was again in need of, of repair as well uh, this is the process right here of of we had to put the decks back on and rebuild the decks and things have been very difficult, as you might imagine, with, with COVID and, um, and, and lumber supplies and so forth. So what's interesting is the decks are essentially made out of two inch thick pieces of lumber. And it was very, very, very difficult to find lumber in the proper size. So in the upper right hand corner, you can see the, the picture with the lumber in the shop and all of the um, all of the vices clamping down. And uh, that was necessary because we had to we had to increase the thickness of some of the lumber uh, and then plane it down to the proper uh, the proper dimensions. On the uh, lower right hand or on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see what before we the decks are installed and now we're in the process of of corking uh, the decks, putting the cotton in and so forth. But before you do that, you have to reef out all the joints, get out all the old excess uh, the excess material and debris. Uh, before you can start to cork. And, uh, and then of course you can see, uh, uh, and then you prime, the, you prime the scenes and then you subsequently put the cotton in. And these were great opportunities for lots of volunteers to come out and assist. And in fact, all the work you're looking at right now on this, this screen has been done since, uh, was done this past year since COVID uh, came upon us. And of course, we have again more volunteers in the process of uh, of performing the corking. Some people like to sit, and other people like to recline. Uh, this, of course, is uh, showing um, the deck in various stages. On the right hand side, lower right hand side, is after the cotton has already been put in, and then the uh, the sealant has been put in on top of that. So it's a, it's a multi-step process and it's quite time consuming. Uh, we've also, uh, in this process, we've had uh, Coast Guard inspections. So everything that we've done through the building process or restoration process has been done in conjunction and in communication with the Coast Guard because we, we do carry passengers on the boat. Uh, we were under strict requirements with the Coast Guard. So the gentleman in the, um, and the flannel uh, shirt on the left-hand side is the, uh, is the Coast Guard uh, representative who came down and did an extensive inspection on the boat. This picture on the left-hand side is on the interior of the rebuilt uh, aft cabin. And here he is inspecting the, uh, you know, the work done on the centerboard encasement. And um, you know, once again, very, very extensive and he documents the whole thing along the way. We also, of course, we're, we're in the process of, of redoing the fuel systems and the electrical systems. So when those plans are, are created, which they've already done, we send them off to the Coast Guard, they inspect them and approve them, which uh, they have been, and we'll be installing the electrical and fuel systems here uh, this spring coming up. Uh, so here he is, and, and final discussions, lots of, uh, Lots of discussions and inspections. Where they're standing right here on the left-hand side is at the helm. Uh, the wheel, of course, was, was taken off and so forth, and we had to uh, re-weld re and do some work on the uh, steering mechanism. Uh, we also have done, uh, and very grateful to ODEC, which is the, uh, the power plant up off Con in Conowingo in Cecil County, uh, they took our winder and the winder is used for the purposes of 
of uh, doing the dredging and and bringing putting out the dredge and then bringing it back in and it's a monstrous piece of equipment uh, so they refurbished it they rebuilt the uh, housing for the for the uh, diesel engine and you can see that structure uh, there and here here we are picking it up at ODEC and then delivering it down to down to Cambridge but before we did that we took um, we took the engine and we had to find well we had to make sure it ran and i'll just play this real quick this video that see works here and you can see that that was the first time that we started to play some time and it runs like that so uh so it's wonderful to see that and then of course once we got down to cambridge we had to get a bit of a move but that gives you an idea of how uh, additionally, we've had to perform work on the starboard side. Uh, the planking above the water line was basically all removed and has been replanked. Uh, here they are um, cutting it out, and that's, I believe, that's John Swain, our master shipwright on the Sawzall there, uh, working in. And this is pictures of, once again, because of the thickness of the lumber, uh, we had to do a, a lamination type process. And we used, um, uh, we used uh, two boards instead of, instead of one to get to the proper thickness, because it had to be, again, essentially two inches. And you'll see how uh, on that upper right-hand uh, picture, how you have one plank, one plank, Plank down. That's the first plank, and then a sub subsequent plank came on top of it. So, uh, uh, once again, very labor intensive. And uh, but this process actually will be stronger than just one plank piece of planking. So, since this time, we had everything. Uh, and again, I'll say the, the you can see the joints. We had to go back and recork all those all those joints as well, and and seal uh, seal up the uh, uh, the bolt. The lag bolt holes as well. Lots and lots of sanding and um, priming. Uh, that's uh, Tom Carroll from Habity Grace, one of our core volunteers. He's also on the board. But you can see here that we're actually, you know, it's very exciting to be getting paint back on to Martha. More sanding and, and sanding the bottoms, of course, getting them pre uh, scraped and prepped. Uh, this on the left-hand side is, uh, you see that little chalk that comes out where the man is with the Sawzall. Uh, that's the chalk where the push boat, and again, there, are, there is no engine on a skipjack. Uh, by law, they can't have an engine on them. So what you have is a push boat and it's a little dinghy, essentially with, a, again, a big diesel engine in it, which uh, is substantially pushes the boat uh, when it's under power. And of course, on the right-hand side is the bow sprit with uh, fresh paint and, um, and varnish, and that goes on the bow of the boat. So there's final, uh, or, or late, let's say late fall this past year, and uh, pretty much is in the condition that Martha looks like currently. As we go back this spring and the weather's breaking, today's a gorgeous day, uh, but we're gonna be going ahead and, and uh, tackling the bottom getting the bottom painted up. And then of course, she will be able to be heading back into the water, which is very, very exciting. We have a couple of final things on the, on the uh, stern rail, which are being replaced. And um, the one thing we did decide to do was we did glass the top of the aft deck house. And um, so it'll be, you know, it'll uh, weather much better uh, than previously. So that's the way Martha looks at this current time. Uh, again, she's come up, she's come quite a long way, and uh, we're really excited about getting her back in the water again, anticipating an early spring. And at this time, we still have the the mast to do. Uh, we're likely in the past, or traditionally, they've done loblolly pines. Uh, we uh, we're not doing a loblolly pine due to their uh, the susceptibility to, to pests and whatnot, we're going to be building a laminated mast, which is a, a kind of like the creme de la creme of mass 
Uh, it's an interesting process. And if there are any volunteers that want to help out state, you know, be looking on the uh, skipjackmartha.org website and um, you can participate as a volunteer uh, as we're going forward. Uh, this is getting into some, we've had some fundraisers, but uh, that's really the restoration process at this point in time. I'm going to uh, come back on right now and stop sharing. So we've done a lot of work. You certainly have. Yes. Either finished again. There you are. <clears throat> there I am. Um, now, when we talked a little earlier, you you mm -hmm. say that the Martha that Martha may be back in Haverty Grace as early as this spring. But well, if I no. understand correctly, and, and that, I can't like go on the Martha yeah. Washington no. by June. <laughs> that's not gonna work. <laughs> no, and and that's something you know. I know people have gotten frustrated in the past and it's, it's a lot has been contingent on financing and so forth and, and work getting done. Cause you know, when we got it down to Cambridge and we really, you know, we, we hauled her out of the water and we had everybody, you know, poking on her and, and, and some really quality folks taking a look at her. And there's, you know, there's always something extra that needs to, needs to be done. And so we're going to have her back in the water this spring. Okay. And there's still additional work that's going to be need to be done with the with the electrical systems and whatnot. And and my goal, and this is kind of a, a personal commitment for me, is I want to have her back up here and have it raised by you know late summer, early fall. And, and and if not sooner, but you know, you know, we, we don't want to make promises, we don't want to set ourselves up for failure and disappoint people. Um, we're in the process of rekindling. Uh, relationships with the people of Habity Grace. And that's one thing like coming in and doing this interview with you, I think it's, it's just so incredibly important because we need, you know, we need the people, we need Habity Grace. Um, we can't do this. We can't do this alone. We need everybody to help and participate. And, and ultimately it benefits. Um, I think everybody, everybody I ever meet or talk to about Martha, they always seem so genuinely excited about the fact that that Martha's getting restored and being done well and that she's going to be coming home and um, I'm, I'm happy to be able to participate and help facilitate that um, really exciting but the next interesting point that comes up is that um, you know once the, we're going to get the boat done and then after that become comes programming and we hope to have her you know back taking kids out in in the spring uh, spring and fall of, of 2023 is, is the goal. So we need, you know, we're still looking to, to, to fill out our board, round out our board with uh, folks from Harford County and particularly Habity Grace if possible. And would really love to have educators um, to help us develop the programming and so forth. So um, uh, there's so much, much work to be done, but, but we are getting there and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good process, very exciting. Well, I'm very excited because your timing for getting programming up and running fits very, very well <laughs> with our timing for the celebration of Harford County's 250th anniversary. That's going to mm -hmm. run from March of 2023 to March of 2024. So I'm really excited about the possibility that Martha Lewis can be part of that big celebration of, of Harford County's founding and its history and her, and. Harvard Grace is clearly central to the history of Harford County and its impact on the history of the country. So I'm delighted that you all have made this commitment. I want to encourage people to continue to support that, come out and help you all as volunteers, because um, I think this is a really exciting thing for Harford County uh, to have Martha Lewis back and have her back programming. Um, and I invite you to center some of your programming in your inaugural year, your return year, around the history of Harford County and the history of Martha Lewis's contribution to the county. I think this is a great, great opportunity for you all, and I'm delighted for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, I think you have really covered the waterfront, no pun intended, <laughs> on this one. And I hope that those of you watching us have enjoyed this presentation about skipjacks and particularly about the restoration of the Martha Lewis. I wanna thank Carl again for being so kind 
as to share um, his uh, um, time and his knowledge of this Martha Lewis with us. Um, and I want to encourage you all to continue to come to other events that we have at the Historical Society um, and to consider making a donation or becoming a member of the Historical Society. Our website is www.harfordhistory.org. On our website, you can purchase numerous publications about the history of Harford County. Tomorrow evening, that is March the 9th, for those of you who are watching this on, on, on March 8th, is our monthly genealogy presentation. This month's topic is researching collateral lines to find answers. Uh, that virtual event starts at 7 p.m. and I invite you to watch that as well. Um, next week, our annual spring concert will return. It returns actually returns on March the 23rd. It's two weeks from now. The Ladies Six will present the history of women in music at 7 p.m. in the historic chapel at St. Ignatius Church at 533 East Jarrettsville Road in Forest Hill. Our next brown bag lunch <clears throat> is on April the 12th and again at 12.30 p.m., Master Gardener Meg Algren will discuss the flowers that bloom in the spring, including stories of their history, both good and bad. Um, genealogy presentation for April is an introduction to famous and infamous people with links to Harford County. Um, so reserve your tickets today for these and other historical society events on our website. Um, you can also learn more about the history of Harford County and have instructions for how to join the society. Again, our web address is www.harfordhistory.org. I also encourage you to become part of the planning for our 250th anniversary. Information on that can be found at harford250.org. Um, and you can access that through the website. Uh, before we go, uh, Carl, would you like one more time to give us that website for the Martha Lewis? Sure. It's, uh, it's skipjackmartha.org. No space in between, just skipjackmartha.org. And um, again, Jackie, just really appreciate the time that you've given us here today to, to talk about Martha. Uh, and also the things that you're doing out at the uh, Historical Society is fantastic. And I, I love your new building or the lobby that you're doing out there. It looks wonderful and it's really it's special to restore that. Thanks. So thank you. Yeah, that's another event that will happen in 2023 is the Rio is the opening of our museum there in the restored lobby. Whole different project. Um, and we'll talk about that sometime, I'm sure, at a brown bag lunch. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next month.